Desert Dusk. Desert Dusk. Desert Dusk Palette. Desert Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. Like fuck. Welcome to the Huda Beauty Eyeshadow Palette. Ugh, oh, I think I'm funny. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review and tutorial using the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to remind you guys of the giveaway that I have going on on my channel right now. Go take a look at my previous video. There's lots of great goodies in that giveaway, including items from Fenty Beauty, Tatcha, Tarte, and more. So go check out that video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment on that video, not on this one, but on that video, and that will make sure that you're entered into the giveaway. I also wanted to say, I've read every single one of your comments on that video. I've gone through every single one to make sure that everybody's entered into the giveaway. I've been keeping track of everybody who's entered the giveaway in an Excel spreadsheet, and then I'm going to use a random number generator to pick the winner. I just wanted to let you guys know that I've seen every single comment that you've left on that video, and I cannot believe how overwhelmed I am by the outpouring of love and support for my channel. Thank you guys so much for all of your wonderful comments. I have seen them. I just didn't want to like or comment back on any of those because I didn't want people to think that I was choosing favorites or that, you know, this comment got a like and mine didn't, so they have a better chance to win the giveaway. Nothing like that. It's going to be completely random, but I wanted to say thank you so much for all of those awesome comments. I appreciate it. I've read every single one. I've been blown away by all of your love. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and get into the video. If you want to see my review and swatches, as well as how I achieved this look using the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette, keep watching. All right, so this is the carton that the Desert Dusk Palette comes in. It's a really beautiful purple, but let's get real. We're just going to throw it out anyways. All right, so when you open up the carton, the palette looks like this. I think this is a really, really beautiful palette. I love this look that they have going on in the front. Does it look like me? This is the Huda Beauty palette. Open me and all your dreams will come true. All right, so when you open up the palette, it actually comes with this little protector right here, which uh, separates the shadows from the mirror, which I appreciate. It does have a very large mirror, which I really appreciate. I like when palettes include a mirror, especially if it's high quality and very big, because then you can use it to sort of do like your up close, oh God. Excuse me. As I was saying, I really like when palettes include a nice, good quality, large mirror so that you can look at yourself while you're using the palette. Now I have to say when I first opened this palette, I was completely in love. There are so many beautiful, warm tone shades in here, as well as some absolutely gorgeous pops of color. I was so, so impressed with just the way that this palette is laid out. It is so beautiful and I love every single shade in this palette. If you've watched me on my channel for a little bit, you know that warm tones are right in my wheelhouse. So everything that's on this palette is just absolutely gorgeous. Even when I saw some of these more bolder shades like Amethyst and Saffron and Blazing, I just thought that they were so pretty. They're the perfect shades to add some pops of color to your eye without going completely overboard. So just going through a couple of the shades really quickly and I'm going to um, show you some close-up swatches. But some of the shades that caught my eye right away, this one here, Twilight, gorgeous shimmery purple. This one, Retrograde, actually reminds me a lot of Max Blue Brown Pigment, except it's like magenta with a teal flash. This shade Angelic, the perfect rose gold, and of course, this one right here, Cosmo, which is a pressed glitter. I don't even think the camera is doing this justice. This is like a deep ruby color, but it has green, gold, red, and purple flashes in it. It is so, so pretty, and I'm actually wearing it on my eyes right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick swatch test on camera before I show you up close swatches of every color. I just wanna caution you against some of the reviews on YouTube where beauty gurus are saying, oh, well, I, you know, I swirled my finger in it once and I swiped it once and it looks like shit. Therefore, it must be a shit eyeshadow. And I really don't subscribe to that. I wanna remind you, don't believe the hype when it comes to one swipe. And you can just like remember that in your head. Don't believe the hype when it comes to one swipe. The truth of the matter is every product is meant to be used the way the creator intended, not the way you intend. If you're somebody that does one circle and one swipe when you're doing swatches, you're probably going to be disappointed with about 50 to 60% of the eyeshadows out there. For the most part, we apply eyeshadow with our brushes and we use our brushes to achieve the desired pigmentation that we want. 
So if I put an eyeshadow on my eye with a brush and it doesn't look as dark as I want it to, I'll go in with more. So I really don't think that finger swatches with one swipe is any sort of indication of how the shadow will perform or if the quality of the shadow is good. I think that this is just a tactic that's used by some beauty gurus to sort of shit on products. I think that a lot of makeup artists and beauty gurus on YouTube want to be able to say something is bad because if they create a dramatic review of something then they'll probably be able to put omg or wtf in the title and then they'll be able to get lots of clicks with that clickbaity title like you know showing a thumbnail of them going like this next to a palette and saying oh well i did one swipe with my finger and it was shit so this palette must suck so when you see my swatches yeah i'm probably dug into the pan two or three more times some of them I might have only needed one swipe. Some of them I might have had to dig into the pad two or three more times to get the color payoff that I wanted so that I can show you what the color actually looks like on my skin. So, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. But I'm gonna do an uninterrupted camera test just so that you can see how these shadows perform. So I'm gonna go into the palette with clean fingers and as you can see, I'm just circling like this two or three times. Here is the pigment on my fingers. So this was Celestial, Nefertiti, Twilight, and Amethyst. And then I'm gonna do one swipe on my hand. One, two, three, four. So there are the shades right there. But as you can see, wow, like that. <laughs> so this shade Twilight is really, really reflective. That's really, really nice, wow. Looks gorgeous. It's like purple with a light blue flash. Super duper pretty. But as you can see with my swatches that I'll show you later, this isn't as dark as these shadows go. So if I were to put this color amethyst on my eyes, I would be able to build it up to the depth and pigmentation that I wanted. You know, so that's one swipe of amethyst, but I actually could go in and deepen it up a lot more. So I'll show you that right now. Look at how much darker it is now, and that's just with a couple more swipes. So if I was applying this shadow to my eyes and it was light purple like it was before and I wanted it a little bit darker, all I would have to do is go in with more. And so one swipe, again, is not indicative of how a shadow performs, the quality of it, or how it's gonna turn out on your eyes. So just be aware of that when you're watching videos. I'm not trying to shit on any other beauty gurus. I just think that like, some beauty gurus are so caught up in the hype, in clicks, in clickbait, in creating drama about palettes and you know being able to shit on something is a lot more dramatic and will probably get a lot more views than just saying something is good. These shadows are obviously really good, so anyone who's saying that they're not pigmented, I don't know. Okay, so now let's get into the close-up swatches. Here we have the first row of colors. This is Desert Sand, Musk, Eden, Amber, Blood Moon, and Oud. And here we have the second row of colors. This is Celestial, Nefertiti, Twilight, Amethyst, Royal, and Retrograde. And here is the third row. We have Cashmere, Angelic, Cosmo, Turkish Delight, Saffron, and Blazing. All right, so those were the close-up swatches. And as you can see, this palette has so many beautiful shades in it. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial so that you can see how I achieved this eye look. All right, so let's get into the tutorial and see how these shadows perform on the eyes. When I first opened this palette, there were so many colors that inspired me right off the bat. I love all of the shimmers in this palette. So Twilight, Retrograde, Celestial, Angelic, Nefertiti, Blood Moon, they're all so gorgeous and would look so beautiful all over the lid. But I have to say, this one was calling out to me right here, the pressed glitter called Cosmo. So I'm going to be doing a look based around that color today. Okay, so to start off, I'm just gonna zoom you in. So I've already done my base and brows and I've put a little bit of the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish eye primer on my eyelids as I always do. So the first color I'm gonna go in with is Desert Sand and I'm gonna put that all over my lid just as a base. All right, so the first color I'm gonna go in with in the crease is called Amber. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that on a Morphe M441 brush and just ever so lightly start dusting that into the crease. It's a really nice color. It's blending out nicely too. I 
I was a little worried about the blendability of these shadows only because my skin is so dry right now. Ever since I got back from South Africa, my skin has just been so flaky and so dry. So I do have dry patches on my brow and eyelid area. So I was a little nervous that the shadow wouldn't blend out just because of that. But I think it speaks to the blendability of these shadows that I haven't had any problem, even though my eyes are super duper dry. Okay, so the next color I'm gonna go in with is called Saffron. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that again on my Morphe M441 brush. I am noticing a little bit of powder kicking up in the pan, but it's not very bad. It's certainly not on the subculture levels and it's not even as bad as what um, I experienced with the Just Peachy palette. So I don't know, for me, I think just lightly dipping your brush into the pan and being really careful with the pigment, I think is helping it to not be so powdery. So I'm just gonna take that color called Saffron, which is a really beautiful red color, and I'm just gonna put that over top of Amber. So far, I'm very happy with the blendability of these shadows. As you can see, I'm not too concerned about what's happening on the lid because I'm gonna cover that up anyways, but I do wanna make sure that the top part of my crease is blended out really nicely. So I'm just taking a brush that doesn't have any product on it and I'm going back and forth over top of that, but these shadows have already blended out super nicely. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, so the next color I'm gonna go in with to deepen up the outer corner is called Oud. Oud? Oud? Oh my gosh, I'm probably butchering that. But it's this really beautiful sort of deep brown color. Taking a little of that on a Morphe M433 brush. Again, being careful with how much I dig the brush into the pan and how much pigment I pick up. I'm just gonna deepen up the outer corner. So I don't know if you can see that, but I am getting a little bit of fallout down on my face there. I made sure I powdered the crap out of my face before I started this, so I'm just gonna brush it away. So again, I'm very, very impressed with the blendability of these shadows. They lay down over each other really, really nicely and they blend in together really well. Okay, so going all over the lid, I'm gonna go in with the shade Blood Moon. I'm gonna put that on a flat synthetic brush and go in all over the lid with that one. Definitely a lot of fallout from that one on my face. So I think the better way to do this would be to use my finger. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of it on my finger and press it onto the lid. Hopefully less fallout that way. And there's definitely still a little bit. And I don't know if you can see like how dry my face is underneath here, but man, I have been moisturizing and moisturizing and I still can't catch a break when it comes to my under eyes. Like it's making me look 100 years old. Okay, so now taking a fluffy brush, I'm just gonna blend out that Blood Moon shade all over the lid. Just making sure there's no harsh lines. And again, I'm gonna take a clean brush and just go back over and make sure everything is completely blended out. I'm just gonna go back in with that dark brown shade and add a little bit more in the outer corner just to make sure everything is all blended out. All right, and now moving into the star of the show, which is Cosmo, and that is a gorgeous pressed glitter. I have seen enough reviews and enough firestorm on social media to know that Cosmo is a true pressed glitter. So it's not meant to go on like a shadow. You do need to use some sort of adhesive if you want to make it stick and you don't want a lot of fallout. So I am gonna go in with a little bit of the Too Faced glitter glue all over my lid first before pressing Cosmo onto the lid. So when working with glitter glue, I just put a tiny amount on the back of my hand, then I pick it up with my brush and I press it where I want to put the glitter. I tend not to wipe because I don't want it to disturb the shadow underneath. So I just press it all over the area where I want the glitter and then before it can dry, I go directly in. Holy crap, this is crazy. I go directly in with the glitter and just press it on. And holy man, that is gorgeous. Wow, I love that. That is so pretty. Oh my gosh. There's so many different facets in there. 
So even though I used glitter glue, you are gonna get some fallout. I really do think that that is completely unavoidable when we're talking about pressed glitter or loose glitter. So you just have to be really careful. With a look like this, you may wanna go in and do your eyes first and then do your foundation afterwards just in case you have a lot of fallout. I've never been able to do that because I don't like the way my eye makeup looks when my face is all red and doesn't have any foundation on it. So I can't really get inspired by the makeup that I'm doing on my eyes because I'm so focused on how bad my skin looks. So I always do my foundation first and I just try to be as careful as possible and use a lot of loose powder under my eyes so that I can brush away any fallout. I still cannot get over how gorgeous this glitter is. I cannot believe how nice it looks. It is so gorgeous. Wow, so pretty. Now moving on to the lower lash line, I'm just gonna take a little bit of that dark brown color again, Oud or Oud, oh my God. I hate when I butcher the names of things, it's like, it's so rude. I'm just gonna take that on an angled brush and run it under the lash line. Then using a little pencil brush, I am going to blend out the lower lash line using a combination of amber and saffron. So looking in this palette, I realize it's beautiful, it's colorful, but there aren't a lot of highlight shades. So I'm gonna go back into that first shade that I dipped into, Desert Sand, just to do my brow bone. You know, and that's, that's not as much of a brow highlight as I would normally like. Then for the inner corner, I don't really see um, like an inner corner shade that I'm used to. So I'm actually gonna dip into this gold shimmer shade called Nefertiti and I am going to put that on the inner corner and see what it looks like. Okay, so that is the finished look for the eyeshadow. I really do love the way that these shadows blended out and I absolutely adore the Cosmo shade. I think this glitter is so pretty and I love it so much. The only thing I wish is that there were a few more highlight shades in the palette because I really like when you can create an entire look from a palette and you don't have to go reaching for other products to get the look that you want. So if there had been a nice shimmery highlight shade for my brow bone in the palette, as well as maybe a few lighter shades for the inner corner, that would have been really good. But then again, if she included some highlight shades in the palette, she would have had to give up some of the shades that are in here. And I love every single shade that's in the palette as well. So you can't have everything. And I still think that this palette is excellent. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and finish the rest of my makeup off of camera. I'm gonna put on some liner, lashes, and lips, as well as a little bit of highlight, and I will be right back. All right, guys, this is the finished look using the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. To finish off this look, I added a little bit of black liquid liner and black pencil liner to my top and bottom lash lines. Then I added some lashes. These are the Ardell Demi Wispies. I added a little bit of highlighter. That's Becca Prosecco Pop. And then for a lip, I first went in with MAC Subculture Lip Pencil, and then I went over it with ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip. This is in the shade Fairy Floss. So moving into my final thoughts on this palette, I did think that the shadows were so beautiful. I thought that they were so pigmented and so blendable, and every single shadow in the entire palette is absolutely gorgeous. There wasn't a single miss for me. My only wish for this palette is that it had a few lighter colors in it because every shade is a little bit dark and there wasn't really anything for me to use on my brow bone and my inner corner. But if she would have included more highlight shades, she would have had to take out some of the existing shades in the palette, and I love every single one of them, so I'm not gonna complain about that. There's a lot of other shades that I have in my collection that I can use for my inner corner and my brow bone, so it's just a very small issue, and I don't think that it impacts the quality of the palette overall or the usability of the palette. So my final thoughts on this palette, I think it's an excellent palette, and if you're an eyeshadow lover, you should definitely go and pick this up, especially if you're into more avant-garde looks and glitter and duo chromes. There's so many beautiful shades in this palette for you to play with and you can make so many different looks with this palette. I definitely think it's a winner. And that is it guys for my review and tutorial with the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. If you like this palette, if you're gonna go pick it up, if you have it and you hate it or if you have it and you love it, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'm dying to know who else has used this palette and what your thoughts are. Don't forget to go check out the makeup giveaway I'm having on my channel right now. Go find the video, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and that will make sure that you're entered in the giveaway. I am so blown away by all of the outpouring of love and support so far for my channel. I couldn't be more grateful. I'm so happy to everyone that's enjoying my content, that's sticking around and watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. So go check out that giveaway so that I can have an opportunity to give back to you guys. 
And as always, guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments down below the kind of videos you want to see me do in the future. And if you didn't like this video, keep that shit to yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next one.